Hello everyone, I'm Cham from Talon Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to check the previous year Infosys reasoning ability questions. As you know, Infosys plan to hire 2023 batch students through on-campus placements. This video will help you to prepare for it. Also, we have started our live training on Infosys specific in which we will cover the previous year questions of reasoning ability, mathematical ability, verbal ability, pseudocodes and puzzle solving. And join our social media handles like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp group. We constantly update placement preparation updates and off-campus updates on our pages. Links to all these handles are given in the description below. So before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. So let's start with the very first question. Okay, guys, before we do start, let me tell you the section name. So this is basically from the directive reasoning part. And particularly in the directive reasoning, we have two areas. One is the syllogisms and the other is the logical deduction. So where you have to deduce an answer from the logic, right? That you are going to get. Now, given the question, which of the statements is a contra-positive? Contra-positive itself says we have to find the negative of the statement. All right. Now, let me start with the question. Given if it is sunny, then the clothes will dry. So given if uh, there is a small condition called if, what is it? Whenever it is sunny, or I can say if it is sunny, then the clothes will dry. That means everybody, if it is sunny, tell me will the clothes get dried or not? Obviously, but then they're asking us to talk about the contra positive one, which is the negative statement. Now, let me tell you a small concept here. First given, there are two points in this uh, statement. What are they? One is the cause and the other is the effect. Can you tell me what is the cause basically? The cause is being sunny and the effect is getting dried. The clothes getting dried. Now, everybody, let me talk about one more point here. The given the effect, which is nothing but getting dried. So to have an effect, there might be n number of causes. The cause one, cause two, cause three, cause four and so on. Maybe not only because of sunny, the clothes may dry. Because maybe you have used a dryer. You have used a dryer and then dried the clothes. That may be the possibility. And maybe you have used a fan to dry your clothes inside. Right? Or maybe being a sunny is the reason to get uh, dried. Or maybe n number of possibilities. Different possibilities we have. But not just one. Given if. Uh, that is why I stress a lot on if. If it is only if then. For example, it said only if it is sunny. Then only the clothes will dry. That means what? At that point, the only reason, the only cause is being sunny. There is no other cause. But here, whenever given if or whenever or every time, remember this, if or whenever or every time, there are n number of possibilities for, a, for an effect to happen. right? So given first one, option A, let's talk about option A. Option A says, if it is not sunny, then the clothes will not dry. Given this cause did not happen here, the third cause did not happen. That means, can you definitely say the effect will never happen? No, maybe because of the cause one happened, maybe the effect can happen or the cause two would have happened and the effect would have happened. Similarly, many number of possibilities of many, one cause would have happened. That says definitely the cause would have happened. There is a chance, right? So can I say this is true? No, this is not true. So therefore, option A is gone. I hope you understood the point here, right? Now, second statement says, if the clothes will not dry, that means everybody, the effect itself did not happen. Now, tell me everybody, if the effect itself did not happen, means is there any chance of happening at least one cause? No, all the causes, whatever are there, would have not happened. That is why the effect did not happen. I hope you completely understood. And this is what a contradictory and negative one, the negative statements. And if you observe the third one, if it is not sunny, then the clothes will dry. Again, here, the second the part of a sentence is not a contradictory. That is a negative. It's a positive one. But in a contra positive, both the points or both the points should be negative. Right? And uh, definitely option B is correct. So I can eliminate option B also. All right, everybody. Now, I can understand there is a so much to think and so much to logically reduce. That is why it is a logically deduction. But everybody, I'll tell a shortcut. What is a shortcut? It's simple. Whenever we have if or whenever or every time, and there are two statements, first statement, comma, second statement. Always take the first statement after the condition as X and the next statement as Y. 
now there are only two possibilities as the options as the answers what is the answer one and the answer two the answer one is a positive one which is actually x implies y that means if x happens definitely y will happen if it is sunny definitely the course will try similarly the negative one is nothing but y dash implies x dash that means dash talks about not that means if the clothes are not getting dry which is nothing but the y not right which is nothing but the y not the then it is not sunny which is nothing but the x not i hope you have clearly understood the shortcut my dears so whenever we have if whenever and every time we have only these two as a possible answers the first one being the positive and the second by being the contra positive statements i hope you thoroughly love this short trip of now right so this is how we basically solve the questions on the logical deduction questions case right yeah now going on to the next now if you observe the question that question is from a data sufficiency concept data sufficiency so there are five questions from the data sufficiency concept in the test i hope you know that now given which of the statements would be a sufficient to determine sam's rank from the bottom in the class of 30 students okay so i hope you at least know how to solve the data sufficiency conceptual questions so i'll explain first of all statement 1 alone because there is a option called one alone is sufficient that means using one alone can i answer the question or not the biggest advantage in data sufficient questions is you need not to give the value of the answer you just need to answer whether you can answer the question or not that's all so using statement 1 alone let us see whether you can answer the question or not all right now moving on to the statement 1 given there are five students between sam and dina fine given there are five students between sam and dina 1 2 3 4 5 and that says dina but is that pretty clear that sam is on top and dina is on bottom no it may be dina or sam there is also one more possibility right so 1 2 3 4 5 either this or the second possibility so using one alone can you exactly say where is sam's rank from the bottom no it can be at any place right out of all the 30 places it can be at the 30th place it can be at the first place it can be in middle also so i'm not so very sure using statement one alone i cannot answer now everybody as you all observe that there is a statement two alone is sufficient let us check with statement two alone now given statement two alone says dina is 10th from the top dina is 10th from the top means can i say first 2 3 4 5 6 and so on 10 and so on up to 30 dina is at the 10th rank right but everybody do you have any info regarding sa in the statement two alone no no info about sa that says can i answer what is sam's rank no statement two alone also will not give me a chance to answer the question so now everybody what i have to do now the third option i have is both one and two searching look i cannot definitely say i cannot answer the question right now because i did not write both one and two together so now let me check with statement one plus statement two together can i answer the question or not right now everybody if you do observe from the first till the last that is and so on 10 and so on like 11 12 and so on up to 30 we know dina's rank is 10th rank now everybody if you do observe we have one more information from statement well or what is it there are five people in between dina and sam there are five people in between dina and sam means it can be on top it can be on bottom that is a disadvantage here right now for example 9 8 7 6 1 2 3 4 5 and therefore the sam can be here so from the bottom i can say sam's rank can be the 28th rank but do you think is the only possibility no the second possibility being 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on 10 and so on 30 it can be also bottom of dina so 11 12 13 14 15 being 1 2 3 4 5 person between sam's rank can be 15th rank so can i have two positions for one person no that is why together also i am unable to answer that says option c must be the answer everybody so neither one or two is sufficient to answer the question all right my dears i hope you completely understood this question yes right now moving on to the next one okay by looking at the question itself we can say the question is from the topic of data interpretation all right where again we have five questions from this concept now given the pie chart given below shows the causes of death in our country it is given that 
a total of 30000 died due to organ failure and malaria find the number of people that died due to brain tumor is the question all right i've given a data given a total of 30000 died due to organ failure and malaria means plus malaria right now given very clearly organ failure we have how much percentage 19.4 percentage all right so that's going to give me 19.4 percentage of what 19 percent of 19.4 percent of the deaths because given deaths now so let deaths be x that's total deaths be x okay so i know that 19.4 percent of x is nothing but the organ failure plus the malaria so malaria is again 19.4 percentage so 19.4 percentage of x is equals to 30000 now all i have is 38.8 percent of the deaths are 30000 means then what is the value of x everybody we will first of all find this what is the value of x x value will be 30000 upon 38.8 into 100 i can say that now let it be the same do not calculate anything over here okay let's find the question what is the question the number of people that died due to brain tumor now brain tumor the final question is about 9.7 percent is so now everybody the question is 9.7 percent is of deaths is equal to how many so from that 9.7 percent means out of 100 into x value you know that is 30,000 upon 38.8 into 100 9.74 times will give me 38.8 two zeros two zeros gets cancelled four sevens are 28 two zero four fives are 20 and two zeros left out and that's going to give me 7500 are the deaths that happened because of the brain tumor everybody so that's his option d should be my answer is that clear everybody a data integration question i hope it is i'm moving on to the next if you observe very properly one more question from the same data Given if the total overall deaths recorded for the country are 80,000, then how many deaths were caused due to accidents? If you observe any pie chart or any circle will be of how much percentage? Exactly 100 percentage. If we add all that percentage, you'll get 100 definitely. So 100 percent of deaths are given as 80,000. Then the question is how many deaths were due to accidents? Accidents of how much percentage? 22.6 percentage of six is what of the deaths are how many right now we can just crisscross and then um, get the answer right so the question mark is equals to so that's going to give me eighty thousand into 22.6 percentage upon 100 percentage so whereas percentage percentage gets cancelled and uh these two zeros these two zeros gets cancelled and uh in that 800 You'll have one zero and the decimal gets cancelled. And all you have to do is 80 into 22.6. Sorry, 226. So that's going to give me the question mark as if you observe 0 into 6 will give me the last data 0 and the only option is 0. And if you do multiply, you'll get the same 18080 with the answer. I hope the question is very easy, everybody. Right? So this is how we basically solve the questions on data and pressure. All right. Moving on to the next. Okay, this is again from the logical reduction where we have some arguments and we have some actions, right? So you have to logically reduce, right? Logic is just nothing but your thinking ability, my dears. Now, given the argument, besides speaking confidently and dressing in presentable manner, self-development is very important to be successful. Now, what is the argument final agenda? The argument says rather than or apart from speaking confidently and dressing presentable manner, you must have a self-development is actually very very important right now that says which of the actions should be taken to become a successful person okay to be successful is to have self-development is the main agenda now the action one says one should focus only on looking good and speaking loudly okay now maybe you can take this looking good as a presentable manner but what about this speaking loudly if you just speak loudly does that prove that you are self-development no maybe may not be but definitely it is not for sure so speaking loudly means that doesn't mean you are self content or self developed so this action cannot be taken right now action two one should focus only on beauty routines to appear presentable okay will the beauty routines will help you to be successful now the question is actually which action to be taken to become a successful but 
just because of beauty routines to appear presentable that doesn't mean you can be successful when you can be successful only if you are self developing all right everybody so that is action 2 is also not considered so which is my answer neither one or two have an idea that's good I'm moving on to the next one okay given one more data sufficiency question so let's see how many can answer this five boys po alan roy sam and ted now mostly they'll give you names to confuse you or to make sure that you are taking so much time but all you have to do is take the initial alphabets if any two persons initial alphabets are same take the next alphabet of them so have p a r s t seated in a row which of these statements would be sufficient to determine the boy sitting in the middle position that means the third position is what i wanted that everybody now let's see the data about statement 1 alone i told you the strategy first statement sam and a that is yes and they are sitting at the extremes of the end okay 1 2 3 4 5 out of these five given yes and a sits at the last is it the only possibility no it can be a or yes also but tell me from this statement when alone am i getting the third position no there is no info regarding the other three persons so third position is still unknown so statement 1 alone cannot answer the question now let us go with statement 2 alone now given statement 2 alone ted is seated to the right of the roy okay to the right of the roy means first of all i have to take roy and then right means our right so ted it is here but everybody do you know what or where these people are sitting like out of these five positions no it can be rt it can be rt right it can be rt also because i'm not going to use statement one information over here i hope you all know that that says everybody the possibility can be rt triple dash dash rt triple dash right and then dash dash rt one dash i hope you understood the point everybody people is that clear yeah so it can be any it can be of any right it can be multiple possibilities even the three the two can be at the last also right so there are many possibilities so statement 2 alone can also give me what is a third person but if you observe statement 1 and statement 2 together let us see whether we can get it or not now i know statement 1 all we have is two people sitting at the edge or the corners s and a and s now everybody through the statement 2 only have is rt or rt is what i have correct everybody so again still the third position is not so clear whether who sits it can be either t or s yes, according to statement 1 and 2 together all right my dear so i'm still unable to answer that says neither one nor two is sufficient to answer this question i hope you understood the question yes move on to the next okay one more data impression now if you observe mostly the questions will be either from data sufficiency data impression or the logical deduction that is deductive reasoning because these are the three areas which reasoning ability covers the questions right i hope you can understand that let's read the question the bar chart given shows the admission of students in the colleges a b and c for physics chemistry mathematics biology statistics and geology departments now find the overall ratio of students admitted in physics chemistry and mathematics departments for the colleges a and c based on the given data right all i require is finding the ratio ratio between two elements that is a is to c colleges and that two particularly three subjects that are physics in the college a chemistry in the college a and mathematics in the college a is to the physics in college c plus chemistry in the college c plus mathematics in the college c now you tell me physics in college a are how many physics college a represents the blue element so that says blue are 100 plus chemistry in the college a is 120 plus mathematics in the college a are 110 is to physics in the college c physics means uh, like uh, the orange color so the orange is 140 in the physics plus chemistry in the college c are 130 plus mathematics in the college c are 150 now if we add all these three the first gives us 340 if i'm not wrong 330 yeah is to the second will give me 404372 yeah 402 so that's going to give me 00 gets cancel 311s are 314s are so that says 11 is to 14 must be the answer and it's option a for you all right my dear yes yeah that's all for this and moving on to the next okay if you observe this 
this is a question from the topic of syllogisms and i hope you know how to solve these questions so these are the type of questions which uses venn diagrams now given first statement says all bridges are purple okay whenever they say all brinjals are purples represent the second element also with a circle that says all the brinjal are purple right and second statement says some brinjal or spinach now whenever we have some brinjal or spinach that too brinjal being inside of the purple we can represent in one way where i'll like to take the minimal element of p even look if you go with this one some brinjals are spinach you are taking the most part of p also but i don't take that i'll take the minimal part okay so this is brinjal this is purple and i can say some of the brinjal are spinach is that clear everybody the minimal part that is possible right now next all purple things are carrots okay given one more aspect called all purple again i'll take the minimal aspect of the spinach with regarding the carrots so this is what the minimum representation might be now given which of the choices is true if the given above statements are also true fine so we will assume these are true and we have to give which is the answer is true all carrots are spinach now can you say all the carrots are spinach from the data no only some carrots are spinach right that says option a is wrong now given the second option no purple things are carrots no purple things are carrots huh? no actually all the purple things are carrots so this completely opposite to the statement right so that's a second option also wrong the third option some purple things are spinach okay some of the purple things are of the spinach yes or no so this is spinach and this is actually purple so some of the purple are spinach yes it is that says definitely option c should be the answer my dear i hope you thoroughly understood how to solve this question so on uh, uh, syllogisms all right yeah move on to the next one okay one more last data sufficiency question let's see this one it is given that the coded sentence first we he means she is beautiful which of these statements would be sufficient to determine the code word for beautiful okay now given statement one alone co we det means girls are beautiful okay co we sorry co we det gives girls are beautiful okay what is the biggest mistake that most of you do is nothing but you don't look the data given in the question basically basically right now itself so many out of thought statement one alone will not give the answer why because we have three elements and three elements we don't have any particular element means what so that itself the people will think statement one alone cannot answer but i'm super sorry you are wrong why in the question there is a data what is that cause we he means she is beautiful i can use any point of time the information given in the question right but i cannot use statement 2 while i'm using statement 1 alone similarly i cannot use statement 1 in the statement 2 alone case but i can use the question data at any point of time right now everybody if you observe these two elements these two statements the first statement and the second statement what is common v is common and that says beautiful is only common word so that gives me statement one alone can give me the answer v is beautiful so statement one alone is sufficient to answer now can i pick up option a and done with the question no you cannot do that you have to check with statement two alone also why because there is a statement two alone also is sufficient so let's go with that statement two alone also says cos meek high that says she is smart okay again people will think statement 2 we don't have any beautiful word so i cannot answer the question so statement 2 alone cannot give me the answer but again you are wrong you did not use the question information says cos v high talks about she is beautiful now if you observe what is common in between these two statements cos and high are same and cos and high are same the common terms and that says everybody what is the only word left out for beautiful that is v so here if you observe she is she is is nothing but cause v i don't care whether what she means and what is means in between those two that is not my requirement my requirement is beautiful beautiful we have only v and that says v is beautiful now everybody if you do observe statement one alone give me the answer 
Similarly, statement two alone also gave me the answer. So that says either one or two is sufficient. Any one of them. Right, everybody? So any one of them can answer me the question, but not both one and two. Both one and two means together. Remember that point. Both itself says one and two must be used. But am I using one and two? No, I'm using either one or two to say the answer. That clearly says option C must be picked up my dears. All right. Yes. So that's all for this video. Hope you understood the questions and the explanation, guys. Thank you for watching the video till the end. If you have liked the video, don't forget to press the like button. Also, join our social media handles like Telegram, Instagram, and WhatsApp groups. Links to all these handles are given in the description below.